Welcome back to another video. So this will be regarding generative AI. So I have a couple of videos on a 3D comparison channel regarding this. And let's take a look at how far this tool has advanced. So let's take a look over here, for example, at this model. We're going to see that this has been set as a sculpt modeling. And uh, within this sculpt, the AI tool will try to generate the general shape of the model. So we see over here how well it managed to do that. Maybe this case study is not that um, impressive, but let's take a look over here. We have this orc. So we see the model. Keep in mind that this has been generated using this image as the original input. And the mesh topology, this is currently set to triangles. This was set to high polygons. And let's also have this downloaded. And within the download folder, we're going to see that it will look like this. So we're going to have the FBX file format, the GLB, the OBJ, and also USDZ. Now, I will import the FBX file within Blender. So I will go to File, Import, FBX, within Downloads, Sculpt Session, this will be the object. If I will just delete the default cube, we're going to see the mesh added over here. And the main um, advantage of this new reconstruction algorithm that they are using is that the model will have a certain amount of symmetry. Now, if I will select this and I will paste this, so I copied and paste that, and on the x-axis I will scale it like this with minus, and let's say that I want to define a new material, I want to make this one red. And we're going to see the initial mesh is yellow and the clone will be red. And the mesh, even though this will not have a perfect symmetry, the symmetry is more than decent over here. And we can start work with this directly within the sculpting environment. If I will check the wireframe of this, just like it's stated on the website, this has been set to triangles. But we can convert that. If I will press F3 and I will add over here, uh, for example, these triangles to quads, we're going to see how Blender will uh, change that. And if I will jump within the sculpting environment, I can also enable the symmetry, for example, on the X. And we're going to see over here we have a small, um, let's say, horn. I can hold down Shift and have that smoothed out. And it will be the same over there. Over here for the ear, we again are going to have some, uh, some added geometry. Again, we can change that. And this is the main advantage of generative AI regarding sculpting, because the hardest part for 3D sculpting was to define the general shape. Afterwards, when you're just going to add details, that is the easy part, because we can use a wide variety of presets over there. Now, if I will check the mesh, if I will press R in order to, to do the remesh, I can make this a little bit finer. For example, I can go with 0 0.06 in this case. And now uh, we're going to see that we have the mesh change now. So we're going to have a lot more geometry to work with. And if I will jump over here within the brush section, and uh, let's just uh, type in uh, scale. So let's see. I'm currently using the free version, so we're going to see over here Dragon Scale Brush. I will search for uh, additional elements that are currently free, so this will be Leather Scale Armor. Not that appealing for a character like this, so uh, let me just type in over here, for example, Reptile, because I know there are some assets that are free for, the, for this one. So we see over here, Reptile Scale Brush. If I will click on that, I will have it selected over here. If I will click another one, initially I will have to wait for that to be downloaded. So we see the progress bar. But afterwards, I can just start adding that to the model. So we see it over there. If I will just slightly increase the strength of this, so we can see it out better. Or I can increase the brush size, and you're going to see how that pattern will look 
on the head of this um, org structure. So we can also change that using the parentheses, make it smaller or larger. Or again, I can swap back to another one. For example, this reptile scare brush. I have it now selected. <clears throat> and I can start adding that to the character. So we see how easily we can add details within Blender. And the main advantage again of the generative AI is that we are going to obtain this detail model that we can just start uh, adding details. So I'm really curious if you ever try sculpting, what do you consider that uh, is the main advantage of this tool that will allow you to generate such a high fidelity shape for the object that you want to sculpt? Because if you're going to take a look over here, there are multiple elements, for example, this dragon head. Again, this has been set to sculpting, and we're going to see how many of those um, elements will already be blocked. So further than that, we can just start adding some details. Maybe regarding the overall size, the software um, tried over here, for example, we see those in the back. Over here on the model, they are longer than the one in the reference, but that is mainly due to the, I think, the perspective um, of this model. Because over here, maybe we have that perspective deformed within that uh, image. If you're going to check some other models, for example, this uh, kangaroo face, we're going to see, again, we have that base mesh. Over here, for the ears, we're also going to have that uh, model quite fine. And afterwards, we can just start adding details. And for that, we can use either Blender, or we can go for more uh, advanced software, such as ZBrush and uh, Mudbox. So let me know in the comment section what is your opinion regarding this. If you ever want to give um, sculpting a try, I think that now with Generative AI, it is a lot easier to get started with this. So I will position a similar video over here on the left side, and I will also add the subscribe button to the right. So that's it. Thanks for watching.